the Morris McRaven Trio. How about one more round of applause for their work? All part of a Charlie Christian International Music Festival taking place this week, and we'll have more on that in a few moments, but we appreciate them coming down and getting us started. We're going to have Jack Poe, the Oklahoma City Police Department chaplain, deliver our invocation. I'll ask Councilman Larry McAtee if he'll lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Would everyone please stand? Let us bow together for prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, hear us as we come to you for guidance in this awesome responsibility of leading our city. I ask that you would give your guidance to this council and their awesome responsibility of seeing the business of our city and let us never forget our duty to the people whom we represent. May you always be near to guide us in our decisions and comfort us in our failures and keep us humble in our successes. And may we always walk close to you as you give us wisdom and understanding to carry out those awesome responsibilities of leading the citizens of Oklahoma City. We ask in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Face the flag. Salute. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good morning. We will get started this morning with our Employee of the Month. Each month, the South Oklahoma City Kiwanis Club helps us honor one of our 4,300 city employees. And this morning, we are welcoming Megan Armstrong from the Development Center. Megan, come on forward. Let's show our appreciation for Megan and her work. Our support group, too. It's so nice to meet you, as I got to do a few moments ago in the council chambers. Tell the citizens about, you know, what do you do for the citizens of Oklahoma City? I do a lot of licensing. We go to special events, um, our restaurants, um, entertainment centers. We do a lot of licensing, and we've done a lot of changes lately. So Things are always changing. Have you noticed that? That's because of all the stuff we do up here. We're always making it harder on, on you and others. We have to pass a resolution, so this is when it kind of gets tense to see if we actually okay. want to make you employee of the month or not. Do we have a motion? Second. Cast your votes. How about that? Passes unanimously. Let's congratulate Megan Armstrong from the Development Center. Congratulations. <laughs> Another special opportunity as we welcome the Oklahoma City Public Schools Teacher of the Year, Meredith Ronowski from Capitol Hill High School. Meredith, come on up. Alex, come on up. Principal. Congratulations. Alex, good to see you. Uh, how, when was this announcement made? It was made, um, I guess, about a month ago, and so I've been enjoying it ever since. Um, <laughs> it was surprising, and I'm not used to all the attention being focused on me. I think I'd rather it be focused on my wonderful students. Um, but no, it's been great, and it's a real honor. Well, on behalf of the council, we appreciate very much what you're doing in, in the Oklahoma City public school system. and. So please pass along our best wishes to the other teachers, and congratulations on being Teacher of the Year. This is quite an honor. Thank you. You bet. Thanks very much. We, we uh, hold on just a second. We do have a citation for you, and I'll ask the clerk to read it. Whereas Meredith Wolanski, Advanced Placement Biology Teacher at Capitol Hill High School, has been named Oklahoma City Teacher of the Year. And whereas several years ago, Meredith Wonski was working as a biochemist when she noticed the lack of workforce diversity around her job site, she decided then to make a change and make a difference. Whereas the biochemist earned a master's degree in cross-cultural education and has been teaching at Capitol Hill High School ever since. Whereas of 14 seniors in the advanced placement biology course, 11 have been accepted to two or four-year colleges and two of them have decided to sign up with the National Guard. And whereas 70 nominees for the Teacher of the Year Award were reduced to nine finalists, and Meredith took the top spot in Oklahoma City, 
She will now compete in the State Teacher of the Year competition. Whereas Meredith Wolonski has been so much more than a biology teacher to the students at Capitol Hill, from volunteering to revive the cheerleading squad to coaching volleyball and tutoring students after school, her words and actions convey success to the students. It will take hard work, but they can succeed. Whereas Capitol Hill High School was on the federal list of schools in need of improvement, when Meredith began teaching there, she is proud to have been a part of the solution to remove Capitol Hill from that list, and proud of the job she does each day teaching our future scientists, teachers, and leaders. Now, therefore, the Mayor and Council of the City of Oklahoma City do hereby congratulate Meredith Woronski for being named Oklahoma City Teacher of the Year. Well, we heard uh, Morris and his trio, and now I'm going to call Anita and Chris up. Um, the Arnolds are here because we are celebrating today the beginning of the Charlie Christian International Music Festival. Days. I left off that last word for, the, for these six days. Let's have the clerk read the proclamation as we get settled. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center, now in its 40th year, was organized to showcase the cultures of African Americans and has brought to our city and our state the best in fine arts and arts education experiences to help develop the artistic talents and teaching abilities of Oklahomans. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center has produced the annual Charlie Christian International Music Festival in Oklahoma City for the education and enrichment of all people for 25 years. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center will celebrate the silver anniversary of the Charlie Christian International Music Festival with numerous collaborations. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center recognizes the contributions of many Oklahoman musicians to the field of music through the Charlie Christian International Music Festival to be held June 1st through 7th. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center will release the latest music history book, Oklahoma City Music, Deep Deuce and Beyond, as part of the Images of America Cities, published by Arcadia Press during the International Music Festival. The Black Liberated Arts Center has brought recognition to Oklahoma City through the International Music Festival as a sponsoring organization of the event and recipient of the Jazz at Lincoln Center's Hall of Fame Award posthumously for Charlie Christian. Whereas the Black Liberated Arts Center has established this festival as an international attraction for Oklahoma City. Now therefore, Mick Cornett, the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City, does hereby proclaim June 1st through 7th, 2010, as Charlie Christian International Music Festival Days in Oklahoma City, and he encourages all citizens to take this opportunity to experience the musical artistry of the festival. And let's show our appreciation for the proclamation, and I'm going to let you talk a little bit about, about the event. Uh, uh, this is Anita and Chris Arnold. Anita, you, you know if you've been following this event from year to year. Chris is her son. Chris and I went to school together many, many years ago. So, it's, Chris, it's great to see you and welcome home. Thank you. The Mayor Cornett and I went to school at the University of Oklahoma at OU. Glad to be back home. I live in Dallas now. I'm the MC for the Dallas Mavericks, but I'm also going to be emceeing this event. And for those who don't know, our special guest artist this Saturday is Najee. He's an internationally known jazz musician. We've also had the opportunity over the years to have George Benson, Lou Rawls, Isaac Hayes, Branford Marsalis. These are some of the international recording artists who have been a part of this festival over the years. And I want to thank my mother again for uh, uh, having me MC it this year, the 25th anniversary. But uh, again, you, this is something you do not want to miss. Thanks very much, Chris. Thank you. A uh, special thanks to uh, you, Mr. Mayor, and the city for being supportive of this event for 25 years. And I'm wearing my silver oh, cool. because of the silver anniversary. <laughs> and so we're going to have a great time. And uh, we passed around little envelopes with the schedule of the festival and another little envelope uh, that, you know, uh, is good for any day of the festival that you know, any of you might wish to come and attend and just see the showcase of music that we've put together for this year. Thank you. Look forward to enjoying it. Let's show our appreciation for the 25th <laughs> International Charlie Christian Music Festival. Thanks, Anita. Hi, Chris. Good to see you. Have fun this week. That's right. 
And it is also Navy Week. Let's bring the whole group up here. We have a proclamation. I'll ask the clerk to read it, and we'll get settled. Whereas Greater Oklahoma City is honored to have the presence of the United States Navy in our community, and whereas Oklahoma City has one of the most active Navy leagues in the United States despite our landlocked location, whereas more than 1,300 active duty sailors and 150 officers are stationed at Tinker Air Force Base to support the TACMO mission with the Navy's E-6 the aircraft and 400 active duty and reserve sailors are assigned to 15 different reserve units at Navy Operational Support Center, Oklahoma City. Whereas the citizens of this great city have a long history of supporting the crew of their namesake submarine, the USS Oklahoma City. Whereas the citizens of Oklahoma City wish to recognize and celebrate the 22nd anniversary of the USS Oklahoma City, SSN 723 commissioning as part of the Oklahoma City Navy Days. Whereas more than 45 active duty Navy recruiters are stationed throughout Oklahoma City enlisting the best and brightest our city has to offer. The Little Caesars Ozarka Oklahoma City Nationals Drag Boat Races is the host of the OKC Navy Days. And whereas the citizens of Oklahoma City wish to thank the men and women who serve in the United States Navy during the OKC Navy Days. All sailors, past and present, connected to Oklahoma, have served their country with honor. Now, therefore, Mick Cornett, the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City, does hereby proclaim June 6th through 13th as United States Navy Days in Oklahoma City. And something tells me this is going to be a very uh, loud round of approval. Thank you all very much. Let's show our appreciation to the Navy. Uh, we really appreciate the... Uh, and very few people realize just what a strong level of support Oklahoma City has for the Navy. And as the proclamation mentioned, we are landlocked. However, we have several hundred Oklahoma City residents who serve in the Naval Reserves, and they are serving our country from time to time at all ports around the world. And we appreciate you all coming down this morning and allowing us to show our support of Navy Week. Thank you again. You bet. Thanks. Well, we're coming up on an anniversary. Bob, you want to come forward here? Bob Blackburn is here because we are celebrating the 100th anniversary of the city of Oklahoma City being chosen as the state capital. We have a proclamation. and We'll get settled here as we ask the clerk to read it. Whereas on June 11, 2010, Oklahoma City will celebrate the centennial of its selection as the capital city by the voters of Oklahoma. And whereas from the time the state capital was moved from Guthrie to Oklahoma City, there have been countless myths surrounding the move, including that a man carrying the great seal chambered through a window of the Logan County Courthouse to a car waiting in the alley, then rushed to Oklahoma City, stealing the seal from Guthrie and taking it to Oklahoma City at high speeds, better than 25 miles per hour. <laughs> Over rutted red dirt roads with Governor Haskell collapsing in his room at the Huckins Hotel at the end of the trip, with the seal safely lodged under his bed. Whereas in reality, on July 21, 1909, the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce delivered a petition to the Assistant Secretary of State in Guthrie calling for an election for the capital to be permanently located in Oklahoma City. Whereas the proclamation was originally prepared with June 14, 1910, designated as the date for the special election, the Governor Haskell marked out 14th and wrote in 11th causing the election to be held on a Saturday, with the results to become known on a Sunday. Whereas Oklahoma City was voted by the people as the permanent capital on the state under initiative petition number seven, state question number four. Whereas Governor Haskell was in Tulsa on the June 11, 1910 election date and learned of the results shortly after midnight, at which time he phoned his personal secretary, W.B. Anthony, and ordered him to contact Secretary of State Bill Cross to pick up the state seal at the Logan County Courthouse and meet him at the Huckins Hotel in downtown Oklahoma City, where Governor Haskell later arrived and stored the seal in a roll-top desk on the hotel's mezzanine level for six weeks. Whereas the state capital city naturally attracts the politically motivated and those whose skills are needed for efficient administration of government, 
and has the tendency to be the prime economic, cultural, and intellectual center of a state. Now, therefore, Mick Cornett, the mayor of the city of Oklahoma City, does hereby proclaim June 11, 2010, as State Capitol Day in celebration of the 100th anniversary of the June 11, 1910 election, where the voters of Oklahoma selected Oklahoma City as the state's capital. That is no small deal. 100 years as the state capital and still going strong. Bob, thanks very much. Any comments you want to make? Mayor, I might just say that at the History Center, located by the state capital, we have documents from that election, and uh, the Oklahoma City Chamber of Commerce promoting its move, the fact that Governor Haskell was uh, legal within his rights to move the capital immediately. The people of Guthrie's cried foul, says it's got to be three more years. U.S. Supreme Court says, no, it is legal to move it to Oklahoma City right away, and we've had the capital since that time. Sure. Thank you for this document. You bet. Bob, thank you. Let's show our appreciation to all the work of the Historical Society. Thanks, Bob. And now we have a special presentation. Teresa, did you bring the check? Teresa Rose is here from Chesapeake Energy. And through the generosity of Chesapeake, a swimming pool that the city of Oklahoma City was going to shut down for a year because of budget restraints will be open. So, Teresa, thank you very much. Let's show our appreciation, <laughs> Teresa. And this is as close as I ever get to the money. This is kind of cool. $39,000 donation from Chesapeake to the Oklahoma City Parks Department. Wendell Wisenhunt is here representing the Parks Department. Teresa, thank you so much for everything you do. You are so welcome. Um, our CEO, Aubrey McClendon, read an article in the Oklahoman that talked about with the challenges that the city was having with revenue, that there were a number of swimming pools that were not going to be open this summer. And in his mind, and when he remembered his childhood, Swimming at a public pool is just part of it. That's just what you're supposed to do as a kid. And so we contacted the city and asked what it would take to at least open one. We couldn't, we couldn't do all of them, but at least um, open one pool. And so we are absolutely thrilled to be in the position to be able to help the city and kiddos have um, that swimming experience this summer. So thank you for all that you're doing, and thank you, Wendell, for making it happen. Well, thanks for being such a great corporate partner. Teresa Rose and Chesapeake, let's show our appreciation again. Thank you. And now we're going to have a report from our Youth Council. Good morning. I'm Austin Kipp. I just graduated from Carl Albert High School and will be attending the University of Oklahoma this fall. I represented Ward 4 in the City's Youth Council program this past year. Um, good morning. My name is Alexis Richards. Um, I'm going to be a senior this year at Westmore High School, and I represented Ward 5. Um, I grew up in OKC, and most of my family lived in Dallas. So growing up as a kid, I figured Oklahoma is a lot smaller and less exciting than the big city of Dallas. But going through Youth Council has shown me so many amazing aspects of this city. Youth Council has shown us the future of this great city and how much momentum it has going forward. We've been acquainted with programs like Project 180, the Devon Tower, MAPS 3, and especially all of the developments from uh, MAPS for Kids. Uh, as I said before, I'm Austin, and Youth Council for me has been the key to make Oklahoma City my home. I grew up in an Air Force family, never having lived anywhere longer than three years, and had only lived in Oklahoma City for one year before being selected for the Youth Council program, so I came in with the minimal knowledge of the city. Without the Youth Leadership Exchange and its amazing staff, I would almost certainly would have remained ignorant and not developed any attachment to Oklahoma City, but now I'm going to at least four years of school at OU, meaning that Oklahoma will be more of a home for me than anywhere I've ever lived. Uh, as far as the present condition of our city that Youth Council has shown us, we've seen that we are facing challenges including the economy, infrastructure improvements, and the health and safety of Oklahoma City residents and citizen issues. Uh, but it's shown us that the city leaders and staff plan for and implement measures to improve quality of life for the, all citizens, protect the present, and have visions for the future, and stay invested in our city. They understand and are dedicated to good government, accountability, and reliability. On more of a personal note, uh, as far as Youth Council, I can't stress how much that it has shown me that the city has to offer its citizens that many of my family and friends would have never known about if I hadn't had the opportunity to participate in this program. Uh, for instance, having toured the city's waste facility and gotten a special tour from Mr. Jim Lynn, I knew about the Saturday morning sweep program and was able to inform some southeast Oklahoma City residents about how it can help their, clean up their neighborhoods. 
And every class day, I would go home and tell my mom, dad, and little sisters about how cool the water treatment facility was or the uh, downtown underground tunnels or about that we have an Asian district right in our own city. And then throughout the next week, I'd go to school and tell my friends about touring the FBI branch we have in Oklahoma City or the Oklahoma City Police Department or the Fire Department or having lunch on the top floor of the Chase Tower downtown. I know more about Oklahoma City and take more pride in it than many of my friends who have lived here all their lives. Um, I have great faith in my city and its leadership, and I have met and had the opportunity to see city, the city through backstage passes and a network with key community leaders which will greatly enhance my future goals. I want to say thank you to the mayor, city council, city manager, city staff who made their time available for us to visit with and provide us with this valuable program to the youth of our city. And on a personal note, I'd like to say, um, so now I can definitely say that Oklahoma City has as much or maybe even more to offer than Dallas without the five-hour bumper-to-bumper traffic. Um, and also I want to say a special thank you to Chief City, Jane Sutter, De Debbie Martin, Mary Walsh, for all your time and commitment to this program. Thank you. Why don't we have all the youth council stand and let's again show our appreciation for everything you've done this year. I hope you enjoyed the year. <laughs> council comments from council on the, the youth council and any interaction they had this year. Yeah, sure, Brian. Yeah. Um, I had the uh, opportunity to, to, you know, speak just like we all did with our with our youth council, and and every time, um, every cycle that we go through this, it just impresses me more and more and more how uh, not only they sharp individuals, but the ability for them to manage their time to be able to do this as well as all the other activities that they're in is just very very impressive, and and so congratulations to you all. Well, again, we appreciate your work. We're on the item three of the council agenda. We're on item three, B, C, D, E, and F. These are appointments. Second. We have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Those appointments pass unanimously. And on to item four, this is the Journal of Council Proceedings. Item A is to receive the Journal of Council Proceedings for May 18th and May 25th. And item B is to approve the Journal of Council Proceedings for May 4th and May 11th. All right, we have a motion and a second on item four. Cast your votes. Passage unanimously. Item 5 is request for uncontested continuance. <clears throat> Mayor, we have several this morning, starting on page 18, page 18, item 8A, SP 415. The applicant has requested that this item be deferred until the June 15th meeting. It's 8A. All right. Item then, 8, 8A. And then on page 20, item 8J, we ask that that be deferred for one month until June 29th. That's 8J. And then on page 21, under item 8K1B, 2330 South Central Avenue, we ask that that be stricken. We'll rework for new owner. Item D, 2132 North Lottie, we ask that that be stricken. The owner has removed. Item 8L1F, 3317 Parkview Avenue, we ask that that be stricken. We're going to rework for additional violations. Item G, 3821 South Wind Court. We ask that that be stricken. The owner has secured. Item H, 2705 Windsor Boulevard. We ask that that be stricken. The owner has secured. And item J, 3344 Northeast 13th Street. We ask that that be stricken. The owner has secured. Are there any more requests for uncontested continuances? All right, we'll recess the council meeting. Convene the Oklahoma City Municipal Facilities Authority where we find seven items. Second. All right. Cast your votes on the MFA. Mayor, I've got a, I'm not going to make a comment on okay. it before we vote on on item C. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a authorization for the uh, manager to negotiate a contract on the renovation of the police headquarters. I'd like to request that uh, in that negotiations that the uh, firm give also give us a preliminary report before we get too far on uh, building a new building versus the remodel. We've had this discussion before. 
It's my understanding that the firms going through there looking at it um, express concerns about the ability to redo that structure with the monies that were there and to give the police what we thought we were going to give them. And I'm not asking for a complete set of plans or anything, but just a preliminary report on uh, the remodel that's, that was uh, discussed and a new building cost before we go too much further. We'd be happy to do that. Yeah, Mayor, I'd, Mayor, I'd, I'd just like, like to uh, kind of second those comments on, uh, on uh, uh, Councilman Mars uh, that, that he made. Um, I've had, I voted um, the last time when this came to a vote to, uh, to build the new, uh, to, I mean to renovate the building, and I've been troubled by that ever since. And I, um, this is just another opportunity to revisit that thing, and I'd like for us to do a really good job of doing it. I, I'm, I'm, I am just, uh, I'm concerned that that, that that was a mistake to vote to, to do it the way we did it, I'm, and I'm glad to see the opportunity to to at least uh, take another look at it. Sounds like there may be new information. Brian? I would just like to uh, third Gary and Pete's comments and okay. uh, voice my support for that. All right. We'll look forward to that report then. Gary, thanks for bringing that to our attention. And we kind of voted simultaneously. Are you good with the, the vote we had, Francis? Yes. Okay. We're good to go. Well, adjourn OC MFA, convened as the Oklahoma City Public Property. We have two items here. All right. Cast your votes on the PPA. Pass unanimously. Adjourn OCPPA, reconvene the council meeting with a consent docket. All right, are there any individual considerations? Hey, Your Honor, I've got a minor questions on two items. Okay. Uh, uh, B is in Boyd and F is in Foxtrot. All right, anybody else? All right, Pat, go ahead with item B. Uh, just a question. On, um, this is a renewal agreement with Clancy Systems International for some parking control systems. And uh, where are these systems? I would assume they're in our parking garages, but I, I don't know that for sure. If they are, how come it's not a cop to expense? Uh, it's, I can't answer that, Mr. Ryan. Okay. If it's in the parking garage, it seems like it would be a legitimate expense that uh, our parking authority might want to assume. Well, just because it's a city contract doesn't mean the copter doesn't buy off on it. I would guess it was. Laura, can you help me? I didn't hear the question. Okay, the question is on item B. It's a renewal of an agreement with Clancy Systems International on parking control systems. Right. And is this in our parking garage? No, the Clancy Systems are the handheld devices that the parking meter uh, uh, readers are using. So the, uh, or actually the, uh, the police personnel who patrol the areas for, and issue parking tickets. Okay. okay. Thank you. And item F, Pat? Item F, um, I just had a question. What is the recovered cost? This is to buy polyethylene refuse bags, and it says it's $65,000, but it's a recovered cost. And that In other words, we um, sell those uh, bags and recover the cost of them. They're sold at the city treasurer's office. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other comments or questions about the consent docket? All right. We have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. It passes unanimously. Item seven is the concurrence docket. 14 items, comments or questions. We have a motion and a second. All right, cast your votes. Pass unanimously. And we're on item eight. These are items that require a separate vote. Item 8A has been deferred until June 15th. That's two weeks from today. Item 8B is a no parking issue. This is in, uh, I guess, Ward 7 and Ward 8 in a couple of different areas. Any comments or questions, Skip or Pat? No, that's sorry, Hills uh, parking out there is a is an issue that uh, continually comes to the fore, and I think this may be a, a partial solution to some of the problems they've encountered out there. All right. I would move this item. All right. Comments or questions on item 8B before we vote? I just had a question mm -hmm. as it relates to the I-35 East Service Road. Um, in particular, what was the driving forces re in reference to the uh, 
Or is this the issue with the, uh, with the big trucks, semi-trucks? I believe that's correct, but let's get Mr. Clowers in here to answer that question. Did you hear the question, Dennis? <clears throat> uh, I heard part of it. Okay. On item B, we're talking about the I-35 service road, and we're wondering what, what, uh, what caused that request to happen. With regard to Edwards Elementary? I, I am guessing it has something to do with the school, but I, I, I can find out and get back to you. Okay. All right. All right. We need a second on item 8B. All right. Cast your votes, and it passes unanimously. Item 8C is updating our CVB ordinance, kind of cleaning up some old language. All right. Cast your votes. Passes unanimously. Item 8D updates our flood insurance maps. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. Item 8E is um, uh, an issue we've been working with on a while. It's front yard parking fines. And this does reflect the, the changes that the council made uh, last time. All right. Ready Second. to go then? Second. All right. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. Item 8F, this is adjustments in the bu building permit fees. Move the item. Second. All right. Cast your votes on 8F. Passed unanimously. Item 8G establishes the fee structure for river events. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. And uh, we have a request for the emergency. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. Item 8H. Some land disturbing permits. Cast your votes on 8H. Passed unanimously. Item 8I is an adjustment on stormwater fees. Cast your votes. Passed unanimously. Item 8J has been deferred one month. The new date is June 29th. Item 8K is a public hearing regarding dilapidated structures. Is there anyone here wishing to speak under any item listed under 8K? Mayor, could I yes. just uh, make a quick comment? I think this is the right one. Um, Danny, do you want to come talk about uh, 225 uh, Southwest 25th Street? Is that item F, I think? Yeah, but they intend to repair that. We'll work with them. I, I don't think we're in any danger of removing I'm that. Sorry, it's that it's that item Q. Yes. Okay. I, I don't think that we're in any danger of removing the structure. The owner is planning to repair it, okay. and we'll You've work with had him. contact recently. And yes, we've talked to him several times. The issue is with regard to the roof? I'm sorry? The issue is with regard to the roof? Yes, it's got some holes in the roof. It's got some, uh, some substantial damage to the, to the property, but they are, and we do expect them to repair it. Okay. It is a significant structure in the middle yes. of the block in Capitol Hill. Yes. Thank you. All right, we're ready to vote on the dilapidated structure list. Cast your votes. Passage unanimously. Item 8L is unsecured structures. Do we have a motion? We have a motion and a second on item 8L. Cast your votes. Passage unanimously. Item 8M is revocable permits. We have a long list today. We'll vote on these separately, but it does show a wide list of, of, of opportunities to do something fun in Oklahoma City largely, and many of these, actually almost all of them, are in June. We'll start with item 8M. This is in Ward 7. It's the Charlie Christian Jazz Festival, um, which will be, I guess it starts today and runs through Sunday. How about a motion? Move it. All right. Cast your votes on item 8M1. Passage unanimously. Item 8M2 is an opportunity to hold the second annual Oklahoma City Nationals drag boat races. Mike McAuliffe is here. Mike, you want to come forward and tell us about the drag boat races? This is, um, I guess, almost two weeks away, but coming up a week from this next weekend. Correct. We wanted to do it with the U.S. Conference of Mayors for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the uh, second year for the Little Caesars Ozark Oklahoma City Nationals. Uh, there's some exciting things about it. First of all, we'll have about 140 teams in Oklahoma City from all over the United States and one team from Canada. 
Um, we're becoming known as the best place to hold this type of event in the United States because of our river, the way it sits down, it runs east to west. Um, I think one of the highlights this year is the finals will be televised on um, Sunday and then shown uh, back on Speed Channel. A 30-minute show will be produced and um, shown nationally in the coming weeks after the race. So we get a little more national exposure for uh, an event there on the river, and uh, everything's come along. And, Mayor, we could not do it without the support of the city manager and his staff to help us get that venue ready. We are using the Dell site again. Uh, we are going to be able to use the Dell parking, which is 3,000 parking spaces right on the river. So it will be very convenient for people to come down and enjoy the races. And hopefully the weather holds out for us, and we'll have three great days down on the Oklahoma River. Thank right. you, Mayor. Mike, thanks very much. How about a motion on the drag boat races? Cast your votes on item 8M2. Pass unanimously. Item 8M3, Oklahoma City Pride, Inc., holding a festival and parade. Looks like we have one person who has signed up to speak, Kirk Martin. Oh, okay. Oklahoma City Pride. Keith, Kirk, is there anything you wanted to say, or are you just here to answer questions if there are any? Okay. We have a motion and a second? Second. All right. Cast your votes on item 8M3. Passes by a count of 8 to 1. Item 8M4 is the Red Man Triathlon, uh, holding the uh, September 25th on Lake Hefner. All right, cast your votes on 8M4, and it passes unanimously. Item 8M5, or 8N1, rather, uh, is the Dead Center Film Festival, which will be coming up on, uh, uh, largely on Broadway, but really all over downtown, and this will be not this weekend, but the week after that. Kim Haywood is here, and maybe she Great. can tell us a little bit about it. Tell us about the Dead Center Good Film Festival. Good morning. Thank you. Well, this no, uh, June 9th through 13th is actually our 10th annual uh, film festival. Uh, we're named Dead Center because we are in the Dead Center of downtown Oklahoma City. For five days, we bring over 100 independent films from all over the world. We are expecting about 10,000 uh, people to come from all over the city and this, actually the country to our festival. Um, in particular, uh, what the uh, vocal permit for is for a film called The Birth of Big Air, which is a biopic about Matt Hoffman, who is a local BMX hero. Um, he actually had a documentary made about him. The documentary is to air on ESPN later in August, but he actually fought to have Dead Center be one of two festivals that's actually premiering this film before it goes on ESPN in August. So we're very excited about it, and thank you for your time. That's wonderful. Thank you for bringing that specifically to Oklahoma City. All right, ready to vote on the Dead Center Film Festival? We need a motion. We need a motion. Cast your votes. And item 8N1 passes unanimously. Item 8N2, Oklahoma City Pride, holding the Oklahoma City Pride Block Party 2010. That'll be June 25th. Have a motion and a second. Cast your votes. Passes 8 to 1. Make it 7 to 1. Item 8O, uh, trans let's see, item 8N3 uh, is to hold the Juneteenth celebration. This will be produced by the Ralph Ellison branch of the Metropolitan Library System at MLK and 23rd Street. Move it. Second. All right, we're voting on item 8N3. Cast your votes. Pass unanimously. Item 8N4 is for Red Earth. This will be uh, June 18th, downtown Oklahoma City. Second. Cast your votes on item 8N4. Pass unanimously. You guys want to come tell us about it? Okay, come on up. First of all, thank you, Mr. Mayor and the Council. Oh, we will need your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Michael Owens. I'm part of the Metropolitan Library System. I manage the Ralph Ellison Library. And, You're here uh, for the uh, Juneteenth celebration. Yes, sir, the Juneteenth yeah. celebration. And, and uh, it's an event uh, that we're bringing the community together. There's going to be a lot of things happening inside the branch itself. There's going to be authors there, as well as a, a health fair, as well as um, uh, local artists showing their work. And so it's going to be a variety of um, events going on in and then outside of, of the library as well. My name is Connie Neal with Perry Publishing and Broadcasting. Um, on the outside, the goal is to put this uh, stage in the middle of 23rd and MLK, so when people do drive by, they can want to participate in the festivities. We will have live entertainment uh, from hip-hop to gospel to uh, R&B, and also we'll have an uh, open forum for new upcoming talent. And we'll also have food vendors and everything, so it'll be very festive. Yeah, sounds like it. Well, good luck, guys. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. And I think we're on to item 8N5. 
This is USA Cycling holding the Oklahoma City Rocks Criterium uh, in two weeks. Move it. And uh, cash Mayor, Mayor, I have a comment. Uh, I, I was contacted by someone that uh, is involved in this, uh, and it's a, it's a um, cycling event, and they would ask, and I, I talked to uh, um, Dennis earlier about it, they would like at least the public works to just run a survey of the route and see if there are substantial uh, problems. I know it's late to ask for that, but, uh, and he knew that when he asked me. But uh, yeah. You're talking about a pothole here or there? Just a pothole. Yeah, and I, sure I, Dennis has assured okay. me they will, but I'd appreciate it if they would do that because that could be a major difference in how well the event comes off if we if we get the road done right. You're absolutely right. All right, we have a motion and a second. We're voting on item 8 and 5, and it passes unanimously. Item 8 O is a transfer to some gold bonds to the Economic Development Trust. All right, cast your votes on 8 O. Passes unanimously. Item 8 P, I understand we do not need executive session. Do not. All right, how about a motion? Have a second? Second. Cast your votes on 8 P. Passes unanimously. Item 8 Q, I understand we do not need executive session. Do not. All right, let's vote on item 8 Q. Passes unanimously. How about item 8R? We were going to strike that and come back with a settlement. Okay. Item 8R is struck. Do we need to vote on that, Francis, or just move on? All right. It is struck. And then we move on to item 8S, and I understand we do need executive session. Yes, sir. Move it. All right. Cast your votes on item 8S. Item 8T, I understand we do need executive session. All right. Cast your votes. Passes unanimously. And item 8U, I understand we do need executive session. All right. And it passes unanimously, too. Puts us on to 8V. These are claims recommended for denial. Is there anyone here wishing to speak under any item listed under 8V? Seeing no one, cast your votes, and those items are denied. And moves us on to item 9A. These are claims recommended for approval. All right, cast your votes on item 9A, and it passes unanimously. Moves us on to item 10. These are items from council. Pat, you want to get us started this morning? And nothing, Your Honor, thank you. Okay, skip. Yeah. Yeah. Meg? Brian? Pete? Nothing. Larry? I'd just like to thank the uh, residents of River Park for their hospitality last Thursday night. Uh, Gina Daniel uh, and the neighbors out there, they're doing a great job. They're getting all geared up uh, to do the rehab work uh, with the uh, Catholic youth who are coming in uh, for a number of houses, both in River Park and around the city. And I'd like to encourage the neighbors of uh, Hilldale to come to their neighborhood meeting tonight uh, at 6.30. And then also Briarwood has a neighborhood meeting coming up this weekend. I'd like to encourage them to come out for that. Thank you, Your Honor. All right. Sam? Mayor, just a note to Council. I, I want to say that the, uh, the Sale Art Festival went very well this past weekend. Channel 9 did a co couple of days coverage, good, good newspaper coverage. Uh, the Channel 9 coverage did, did pick up some comment about the concerns on one of the... Uh, a sponsor's concern about fewer exhibits this year. If, if, the, if that was true, it was hardly noticeable. What was noticeable was the clearance and, and uh, uh, I just think the, the ordinance and the outside sales permit that we worked on, it did have very much impact on, on the Paseo Festival. Uh, really enhanced the public safety of this event. The, the crowd was enormous. I, I'm certain larger than any other year with, with, with the good weather. But the noticeable setbacks, uh, clearance on sidewalks on both sides of the event, just uh, moved traffic extremely well. I didn't hear anything from police about incidents except a few little parking um, neighborhood parking issues that we're going to always have because it's in the midst of the neighborhood. But the shuttle service that started this year between First Christian Church and, and the festival uh, was very popular. So uh, I just want to thank the council for being patient this past year and working through some changes. Uh, it, it had some real positive effects. Right. Mayor, if I could just right. echo Sam's comments. Uh, Sam, I completely agree with you. It was really a great experience. You could you could tell there was a difference. It was easier to get around. Crowds were, um, there were just tons of people there. And, uh, you know, really interesting art, interesting merchandise, great food. Uh, everybody looked like they were having a wonderful time. Gary? All right. 
City Manager reports. A couple this morning. Mayor, um, starting with the uh, Moody's with Oklahoma City debt rating to, to, to AAA, um, Standard and Poor had had us rated for AAA for a couple of years now. Moody's always had us a step down, and, and uh, they've done some, some readjustments and, and, and given us the, the AAA. Um, that's really, uh, I think, great during this time. I think it has a lot to do with the, some of the information we put out earlier in the budget process comparing us to other cities. And although things are tough here, they're not as tough as, as in a number of other cities across the country. So that being said, it still it validates a lot of the, the, the financial policies that we've done and, and how we manage some of the things uh, as we go forward. The second thing I wanted to highlight is the May sales and tax, sales and use tax collections. And I think there's a couple of things that are important here. It was a very good month. Uh, for the month, uh, the uh, use tax was a... Uh, uh, a million dollars over pre or the sales tax is a million dollars over the previous year. First time we've seen that in over 18 months. Um, the uh, the use tax uh, uh, was also over over the previous year. But we need to remember that as we go into the the, the budget finishing up next week, that even with that good check, with the sales and use tax combined, we're 15.5 million dollars below last year, and we're. Uh, $19.7 million below target. So this is good. We love the, tr the, the check. I think I mentioned earlier that one month is not a trend to make, and I really believe that. And it's really good, good news, but it doesn't significantly change where we're at as we go into the, in, in, into the uh, last few weeks of the budget adoption. Well, and a reminder that you know, budget projections are not discretionary. They're based on you know, financial modeling, based on historical trends. And uh, we'd love to think that the recession is over. We just don't know yet. We need a couple more of these before I feel you know, really good about to kind of announcing uh, to ourselves that the, the good times have returned to Oklahoma City. But it sure looks good, and there's every reason to be confident as far as I'm concerned. Any other comments from council? Uh, uh, a couple. One, I would, um, I would say we need more than a couple. I mean, given the worldwide economic conditions, uh, uh, we need it. Uh, um, this is a good sign, but... Uh, but uh, hopefully, but, but I think we need more than a couple more good ones before we start to say we're through it. The second thing is I understand that we were better than uh, a year ago. But a year ago, we were down from what our projection was. Isn't that right? Yeah. Are we, was this month, was May, this collection over the projection for May of 2009? Gosh, um, I think it was slightly. I think it was very close, sir. Okay. But it is a very valid okay. point. Some of the, 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 the graphs we showed earlier, even you know, even with some good months, we're, we're still well below where we were in, say, 07. Right. So, so yeah. I got more meaningful comparison. I'd be with 07 because yeah. that was before the things fell apart. Uh, and I would uh, second to Councilman White's comments. I, I think we ought to keep this whole year as conservative as we can because I think we're in for some long-term secular changes in the financial system and I think we need to be aware of those and prepare ourselves for them. Yeah. Larry? Yeah, just uh, on what uh, Councilman White was talking about, Jim. If you were to draw that line uh, that's on your chart right here that shows us compared to last year, uh, I think a more meaningful line is where does that compare to 2008 and 2007 because we're still at a level below or equal to what, 2008? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's correct, sir. You, you, you are absolutely correct. And we showed some of those graphs in the budget presentation, not for May because we didn't have the May data at that time, but for April. It showed that, you, you know, you had to go back three years, really, to get back to those same revenue levels that we had. You know, and, and, and if it, it's not hard to, to, to look at this graph and say that the percentage up in May this year is about the same as the percentage down for the year before. And here is the expert on uh, revenue in comparable years, Mr. Freeman. Well, I'm sorry. What was the question on that? <laughs> the question was, how far do we, even though we're up a million dollars uh, over last year's collection, uh, you know, how, how does that compare to, to the previous year and the, and the year before that, Craig? Looking back at fiscal year 08, it's basically about the same as what we received in fiscal year 08, slightly higher than what we collected in 08. Um, and it is... Well, and it was 7% above what we had in 09. 7% above 09. Right. Oh, wait, how does it compare to 07? Looking at 07. It 
it's slightly above 07, about $300,000 above 07. So, so let's put things in perspective, as, as several council have a very good grasp of, that although that it's a good check for us, it really goes back and it's very similar to the same revenue we received in 07. And that's what we've been trying to show in some of the budget information. And although this is a, a good month for us, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's, it's still um, not real positive in the overall growth we've had in the past. I, I think there's a, oh, sorry, I, I think there's a second way to look at that as well. Um, if I recall correctly, didn't the uh, fellow from OSU, when he came to talk to us about the budget and the forecast, indicated that from where we were today, it was going to take us three to four years in the future to get back to that same number? Right. I th we had provided some information on that, basically saying that if we get back to our normal growth, normal growth of sales tax is about 4%. And if we just assume that we get back to normal growth, we're three to four years out before, I think we said it was FY13 before we get to FY09 actual collections. Right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry? Which means, Craig, uh, we cannot spend money uh, at a rate of back to where it was. We've got to spend money at a, at a reduced rate until we catch up. That's correct. Okay. Any other comments? Skip? Uh, manager, do you contribute most of this? As far as the uh, the increase to just retail sales, yes, I'm sorry, yes, I do. We, we we've seen some positive trends, not great positive trends, but slight positive trends in that area. All right. Anything else on the city manager reports? No, sir. Citizens to be heard. No one's here. So we have executive session. We'll be back.